Did you ever think of becoming an architect? Uh, not early on, but later on, sometimes I've had moments when I wished I had been. Because isn't know? architecture like theater set sets writ large? I mean, there are buildings and places that people live in, and you create sets, which are, we make this fictional world where people live out worlds in a fictional world, mm. and then there's the macro architecture, which people live and work in that. Sort of reflections of the same thing, isn't it? It's just that I have, I've had moments later in my life when I think sometimes, God, I should have done that. But, <clears throat> I mean, it's not with like a big regret that I can't, you know, too late now. Wreck my life or anything. It hasn't at all. But uh, there are probably other there are other uh, aspects of an architect's metier that I maybe be less enchanted with. Uh, for example, the the preoccupation with codes, building codes. I mean, uh, you're not just free to do whatever you want to do. You there are you have to know about the codes, and in order to qualify for the order of architects, you have to be on top of all of stuff like the building codes and stuff like new materials and stuff. I'm more interested in old materials if you really want to know the truth. You know what I mean? You mean used or you mean of historical nature? Of historical nature. Um, Is there a historical period that attracts you more than others? Uh, oh, God, no. I mean, they, it's all wonderful, you know. You can always find something wonderful. In, in. But I'm, I'm in, desperately interested in new architecture, too. But let's just talk history a bit. When you look at a historical period, is there something that your designer's eye looks for? If you're looking at restoration, if you're looking at medieval, if you're looking at, you know, 18th century Japanese, is there something that you are looking for as a designer? Maybe. I mean, it's not... Um that you get too focused on one particular period in, in architectural history, but I'm, I'm always interested in think how an architecture or a stage decor might look in the light. And I'm interested in things that create a shadow. For example, like a cornice that sticks out, protrudes from a surface. Uh, if it's in a certain kind of light, the light hits it this way, it creates like a shadow underneath it. So that chiaroscuro um, aspect of, of architecture is always interesting to me. And, um, I mean, uh, shadows naturally happen underneath things if they're lit by the sun. That's why, that's why lighting these public buildings is, you know, like the parliament buildings in Ottawa or a lot of um, other public buildings now, that they, they light them at night and it's amazing looking to see them. Mm -hmm. But it's exactly the opposite, usually, to what happens in nature. In other words, the lighting source is often from down below, and it lights up. So there are no, there's no shadow under the corners. The shadow's on top of the corners. Know what I mean? Right. So, but, I mean, it's not unpleasant. I mean, you can do... But it looks a little weird at times. Well, it, it looks weird, but it looks completely the opposite of right. how it looks uh, naturally, right? So uh, the way the light affects a surface or an architecture is always interesting to me. And it's something that carries over into uh, scenography.